Hey guys, so I the, uh, just decided the next puzzle game might as well be Cube. This has been on the to-do list for a while. I actually played this game when it first came out in 2011. I didn't beat it. I don't really remember how far it made it. I think there was actually one particular puzzle that kind of turned me off for some reason. I didn't really come back to it. But it's been like six years, so I don't think I can really remember much from it. I definitely haven't like committed it to memory like I did with Portal and stuff like that. But I definitely haven't done a series on this channel yet, so I might as well do a series on Cube, because they're making a sequel next year, I think. So that... I think that's seven year wait for an indie sequel? Huh. Actually, actually, it's weird reconciling in my head that this game's from 2011. It feels way more recent than that for some reason. But it's another one of those post-portal, you're in a chamber, doing puzzles game. What if it didn't kill him? With all due respect, your best guess is still just a guess. We need to have faith in the possibility of good. Wait, hold on. His oxygen consumption's going up. I think he's alive. He's conscious. Hey, go steady down there. You've been out for a couple weeks. Fifteen days, in fact. They thought you were dead. If it wasn't for your life suit, you probably would be. Listen, there's been a complication. We can't link it to your POV camera, and it looks like communications are only working one way. You can hear me, I hope, but I can't hear you. Speaking of which, just gonna check something real quick. Any, uh, any subtitles, maybe? Just, you know, for the non-English speakers, or if I ever speak over her a little bit on accident, and so on. Nope, I don't think so. That means we don't know how badly you were affected by the transportation. If you're feeling confused or disoriented, you should know that deep space travel can do you pretty serious psychological damage. Especially to your memory. Even a few hours out there in the dark can cause permanent problems. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mission Control are concerned you might have no idea who you are, or why you're in there. If that's true, I have some difficult facts for you. You're a long way from Earth. A very long way. But every single person on the planet is depending on you. That thing you're inside right now, whatever it is, is gonna hit Earth in the next few hours. And if it does, that's the end of everything. You need to decipher and dismantle it from the inside before that happens. I just hope you haven't forgotten how. We all do. Now, listen carefully. This is important. The reason why it's me talking to you and not mission control is because you're too far out into deep space. Their signal can't reach you out there, but mine can. I'm Commander Novak. I'm an astronaut on board the International Space Station. I'm gonna relay everything they tell me, but the bad news is, every time I orbit around the far side of the Earth, I'll move out of radio range. When that happens, you're gonna be on your own for a while. Just stay calm, and keep your head straight until I get back into range. Okay, this is it. I'm orbiting out of range now. I'll be back soon. Just remember what I've told you, and believe it. Oh, here we go. So, this game has a weird history, and I'll try to relay a little bit of it, but I, uh... Forgot to refresh myself on it right before starting this, so I'm a little foggy, but... I think I know what happened, which is that... This is the director's cut of the game, which came out, uh... Sometime after the original version of the game. And the weird quirk of it is that one of the complaints people had about this game was that it had no story. Oldest narration here is new to me, too. Not that I remember much of the game in general, but like... There was no narration, there was no story, there was no context to this game. You were just a character going around in cube rooms and solving cube puzzles for seemingly no reason. And, uh, turned out, uh, people... People playing video games in a... Used to games like Myst or used to games like Portal, usually one of the two is where they came from. They like... Story in their puzzle games on some level. So they just sort of grafted a story onto it in the director's cut version. And so they'll, it'll probably bust at the seams every now and then because of moments like that where, like, 
we're stuck in a room and it's like literally can't proceed because the character's monologuing at us. And in another game that was built to have the narration there, you might be walking down a hallway when that part happens or something. But because there was no... Because it was just like a... Because they, they're just trying to graph the story onto this, they just like, um, just stand here for a while until the monologuing finishes. Although I'm saying that, and like, there's all these... We're doing this now where I'm waiting for elevators and stuff to happen, so... I'm actually a little confused why uh, they didn't just have the dialogue play during this part. Huh. Yeah, this is almost like an on-rails section, like when you're waiting in the train and stuff like that at, at the beginning of various Half-Life games. So it seems like you could actually write the dialogue to fit pretty closely into whatever duration this part la lasts and then you're good. Either way, it probably it probably sets our expectations up accurately that the uh, the story may it could be good, could be bad, could be completely forgettable, but it's probably going to be really awkwardly crafted onto the game because it literally did not exist when the game first came out, which is such a weird thing to have happen for a game. Also, they immediately set up a story. They immediately set up an explanation for why the story is going to just disappear for large chunks of time, because. They don't, can't fit into the story all the time, and that's because, like, the character is going to go out of radio signal distance. This seems to be like a progression marker. One of the six things is marked. The spacebar jumps. I can click on this to raise it up. I can right-click to raise it down. Basic starting mechanic. And they set up both so you have to figure it out in order to continue. So the red ones work like this. You pull them out of wherever they are, they face one direction, so you have to figure out what direction they're facing, and then react accordingly. Blue, what do you do? You're spring, so I'd, I'd prime you. And then we fly. Oh, didn't see that. There we go. Nailed it. Nailed it. Oh yeah, oh, where am I? Hey, how you doing? I probably need you so I can land on you. So much like this game, much like Portal and, uh... Oh, are doing, are we monologuing now? Nope, the hands just kind of went away. So much like Portal and Quantum Conundrum and stuff like that, we're going after this general idea of having... Looks like yellow's conjoined. We're going after the idea of having a puzzle platform or a puzzle game where you have, like, chambers and stuff that are defined. Oh, let's figure this one out. Okay, so whichever one you click on is the one that comes out the most. You need to plan accordingly with that. We have three mechanics so far. In fact, we had, we had Cube go after the same idea. Not Cube, sorry. Uh, Chroma Gun was another game I played that went after this exact a aesthetic. They're like, ooh, we can latch onto this portal idea because it lets us do very simple rooms with very simple squares. And so an indie developer can get away with uh, a whole lot they normally couldn't get away with as far as trying to get to, to get a, a somewhat pleasant visual design out with, with minimal uh, complexity at the visuals because you can only handle so much. Unfortunately, Chroma Gun was not a particularly good puzzle game, in my opinion. I got through it, unlike some puzzle games that were significantly worse, but man, it just didn't seem like it had that much to it, unfortunately. Well, this is gonna be strangely shaped. So I can't put you like that, because the- yeah, I need to do it this way because it needs to not block the jump. Here we go. Much like Chroma Gun, it'll be interesting to see if this game can do interesting thing with its limitations. That's the question that's posed here. Look at that. By the way, that's a fun trick. Oh, am I dying right now? Oh, I should have really planned about this. Or is this just... No, that's just the new shape of the room. Okay. I'm like, oh crap, am I in a trash compactor right now? Uh, 
So portal is really clever because it takes these really confined areas and it starts restricting like which places you can portal uh, plot, which which surfaces are portalable and stuff like that, and which which surfaces different things work on, and they work out from there. And so when you play a game like this, one of the questions is whether or not the game can, in fact, oh, that's too far. It's the other way then, maybe just all the way out of the way. When you get a game like this, a chroma gun, the question is, can they do interesting thing with the limitations? Because immediately, this game and chroma gun, I can tell... They do somewhat put themselves in a hole with their basic setup. Because here, we have specific squares that are interactive and everything else isn't. And so, we, the question is whether they can make those squares interesting or not. It's like if there's just a wall that's a, a red spot, an A spot that's blue, an A spot that's yellow and stuff like that, then how much does it feel like you're solving a puzzle and how much does it feel like you're following instructions, for example? And Chroma Gun suffered by that, from that a little bit because it'd be like, oh, well, that's obviously the one thing I can paint and, and it has to be this color, so uh, yeah, I followed instructions. And at its worst, Chroma Gun got kind of weird and messy, unfortunately. The question here is, is this just the tutorial, or does the whole game feel like that? That'll be the challenge they have to rise above. Or, well, we already know, some of you already know whether they did or not, because the game came out in the past. Can I pick you up? E, F, R, G, A, Q. None of my buttons do anything for now. Okay, we'll see. Okay, so this makes this thing return to the, the spot that it spawns at. Maybe good or bad. Okay, so now we can move it around. Okay. That gives us the option to raise something even higher. So now we have a physics object we push around. We're iterating. Okay, this is a good sign. We're, we are in, we're, we're iterating now on ideas. There we go. Now we're mixing the different cubes together to catch stuff on top of stuff. Oh, weird! I couldn't jump. I thought, I, I thought for sure there was like something above my head with the way I was kind of stopping. We need to preamp you out. To catch you. For reasons. Then we need to pull you back. I need to get up there too, I think. There we go. At which point we likely need to pull you back so then you can come out. And push the cube onto this, so that this can be the maximum height. Except we'll do that while I'm over here. Which one did I raise up? Oh, middle one, whoops. Not what I was going for. Gotcha. They seem pleased with their with their visual design for this. Thing is Name is nine one nine. Ooh. Is are we expanding? What's the play button do? Makes a ball come out. This is where one might ask, why does this entire what does this entire thing have to do with uh, saving the world from something in space? Which you know, good question. Right, let's let's go back to you being in the hole and let's start prep, prepping this whole area. So this 
combines to being a, a conjoined area. Our goal is to get you, presumably, all the way to this green spot. In which case, we probably need to get you to touch this blue spot, so we need to push you aside so you go there. Hopefully. So that's a straight path. That goes to that, so we need to make you sure that you go over there. You're gonna come straight through here. In which case, I want you to land here so that you can push this over. So this needs to be over more, I think. Yeah. Land here, this will push it over and it'll go down there. Oh, right. Stay on path. There we go. That puzzle's a good sign for this game. Definitely a sense of by the numbers, though. It's like every single thing in the room is like, okay, well, obviously this does something. You do this with that, and then you... Like, there's definitely like a paint-by-numbers nature a little bit to it, but at least there was, there was some more problem-solving. This might go somewhere interesting. Now we got purples. We have a rotating room. Alright, well my first instinct is to try to rotate the room while this... Yep. Breath of the Wild. Alright. Land on top, good. Well, that's trippy. <laughs> it makes it look like the entire world is spinning if I can keep the camera perfectly still so that the only- so that the per thing that I'm rotating on is, is staying still. The magic of perspective. Okay. So you go up like that. So I need you to go over here, which means I need you to go over here. So I can jump across the here. Oop. Up. Oh, there we go. Don't fall off. Uh-oh. Um... Okay, so I can't jump this high. This little ledge here doesn't count either. Ah. Oh wait, I sent you back first. I bet I need to prime you and then land on you by, pull by retracting this. There we go. There we go, they did something clever. Hello? Can you hear me? Huh. No point in saying that, is there? Okay. I'm gonna have faith. I'm at the peak of my orbit again, so fingers crossed this is getting to you. I've been speaking with Mission Control. They're worried about you. Because your radio's out, we don't know if you've lost your memory or not. If you have, it could... It could be bad for the mission. One of the methods they use to bring back memories for amnesiac patients is to talk to them about important events in their lives. So, before you left, you wrote yourself a letter. Just in case. It's a letter to you about you. Mission Control gave me a transcript. We think it's for the best that I read some of it to you. 
This is an amusing little trick where you go down a hallway and it just warps okay. around itself. Well, first, you're married. You have no children. You live in Colorado Springs, but you got married in Iceland. That's nice. You... Damn. I'm orbiting out of range. I'll read more if you're still there. Well, we almost got to learn about ourselves for a little bit there. I will say, well, when did this come out? 2000, if this was 2011, didn't this come out the same year as Portal 2 then? I wonder. Because, yeah, the, uh, Wheatley pulls the same tricks at times. Or anyone really. Was it Wheatley? No. I don't remember who did, who did it exactly, but there was definitely a few tricks along the way in, in Portal 2. Maybe Portal 1? Maybe both portals, yeah, where they, they screw around with the idea of, like, oh, you're going that way, nah. -uh. Halfway through. Okay, so. The obvious setup is to bounce that. Let's figure out why, though. That'll make it bounce over there, but also why? Interesting. Ugh! Okay. Thought I was gonna die there. Wasn't entirely sure why it didn't immediately work, but that's not really a big concern yet. Oh, well, that's annoying. Let's go back. And we're out. Presumably I just push it in the hole, right? Yeah. Ah, it kept going via momentum. Which is good, because we'd be in trouble otherwise. What happens if I press the button again? New ball just shows up. I don't need you, other red guy, apparently. <laughs> Okay. I take it the idea is to rotate you so that it catches you when you fall in the hole. Got it. Nope, wrong way. David catches? Yep. And then... Nope. Rabble. Okay. So I need a way to get it to go in that hole specifically. Which is gonna be hard. Oh, it didn't start falling off that time. Go, 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 hup. Not one more. Go. Now this time. Maybe. I mean, it needs to catch it, though, so let's start off with going that way. You get to fall off first. There we go. Nope. Somehow mixing up my direction somehow. <laughs> Clicking too fast. Not rolling at all. The goal is just to prop you up in front of that thing. I'm actually not entirely sure how I want to proceed with this.
that's the only way to catch you. Unless you'll somehow balance, but that seems like it wouldn't happen. Oops. Why do I always do that? <laughs> yeah, it's the same problem again, basically. And unlike before, it's not interested in rolling for a bit. This seems like it's got to be, like, painfully obvious, and yet somehow I'm not at all up for it. That doesn't help either. <laughs> Block it. No. Oh. That's a good sign. <laughs> I don't think this is the intended solution. But it amuses me. No! It's one of those ones where, like, I f it feels like it's gotta be so obvious. Like, it feel like it almost feels like I already did it right somehow, but it somehow got it wrong anyway. Like, I don't... I don't know how I'm not done with this one yet. <laughs> oh, get so much momentum. Go back. I need this diving board to save it. <laughs> no, that doesn't help, really. Like, other configurations, it can't be any help, either. Yeah, it just ends up in the same place in either pose. And it won't roll down. How am I stuck already? I'm a little baffled. This seems like such a straightforward puzzle and somehow I'm not doing this correctly. What am I doing wrong this time? Can I just like... Drop it or something? Let's see. So the, yeah, is that the puzzle? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Going, yes. Yes. Oh my god. It done happened. Yes. Is that all I need? Go in the hole. There we go. Hey, I think that's a full victory. Yep, I found the... this thing. Is this solid? Oh, it is solid. It's like a, like a glass or a force field. Something, something that only the ball can go through, at least. Alright. That, that's the first three floors done, I think. Got it.